Guys, what is going on today? We are gonna to talk about the top 10 mistakes that I have made when buying a trailer. Hey, so keep it in mind, if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button below. Don't forget to read the description, a lot of helpful links in there. Here we go. So I have bought a lot of trailers in my day, uh, way too many that I can even really remember. I tried to look for all the pictures, I just don't have all the pictures available of all the trailers. Quite a few custom made ones, uh, even just some local fabricators, you know, bought a lot of used ones, galvanized aluminum, steel, you know, gooseneck, bumper pull, enclosed, all the above. And there is always something that I regret or I wish that the trailer had or I wish I would have done differently, this, that, the other thing. You know, it's kind of, you wish you had like 10 trailers because they all are good at one specific thing. I want to tell you the things that I did in particular here that I regret, hopefully help you avoid making the same mistakes. This is the longest trailer that I've had by far, and it has finally become an adequate size to meet my needs. And it's gonna be a 28 foot flat deck here, and then you have a five foot dovetail here on the back as well. And, you know, by the time you add on for me, you know, a tractor, you know, most of them are not gonna be this big even, but even like a, a two series tractor, one series, three series, that kind of thing. You got a loader on it, you got a brush hog on it, you have 20 feet right there. You know, and you really don't want to max out your entire trailer just with the machine. You want to have some room to spare so you can balance things properly as well. And finally, you know, 33 foot overall length here has become adequate. And I can't tell you how many 14 foot, 16 foot, 18 foot, 20 foot trailers I've had that just didn't meet the needs. So I think after years of trial and error, I finally hit the nail on the head with the right length for me. So there's a lot of ramp choices out there depending on the trailer that you're looking at. You know, obviously if you have a tilt deck, for instance, there's not really ramps involved with that. But on something like this, that's gonna be a fixed type deck, you gotta have some sort of ramps on the back. I've had just about everything except for a hydraulic dovetail. I really wanted to get that on this trailer here, but it was, well, very, very expensive to add that on and also weighed so much more that it cut into the, um, the load capacity for the trailer here, so I opted not to do that. This has been my favorite ramp setup that I've had to date. These are gonna be the monster ramps here where they flip up like this, flip back down. They can be stored in the up position if needed. And you can also, when they're in the folded position, drive equipment on here and then use that as um, additional space as well. For years I had trailers with either pull out ramps from the side or pull out ramps from the back that you would then hang on here. You know, most of them didn't come with any kind of a, a retainer rod or pin. A couple of them did. With a design like this right here, you have a complete ramp going all the way down, you know, except for a, a little skinny gap there in the middle. It's super solid. It's, it's permanently, you know, part of the trailer here. You can see the, the frame that's welded in place here and then uh, rigidly tied in place here as well. So it's a very secure, very safe feeling coming on and off the trailer. Not that I ever had an accident with the other setup, but I can tell you it was always in the back of my mind. If you have the extra money, it's definitely worth getting a setup like this. Yeah, so tires are one of the things that uh, you kind of figure out after you go along. And my last trailer, for instance, it was an aluminum, American Hauler was the brand, 20 foot car hauler. Uh, came with the cheapest possible tires that were on there. I don't really remember if there was an upgrade option or not. There probably was. It seems like there normally are if you're gonna buy a track or a trailer new. So on this PJ trailer, when I custom ordered it here, this is gonna be a tandem axle setup, but it's gonna be a single tire, a single wheel on either side. There's not a dually setup here as far as the tires go on, on either side. I went with a load range G tire that's on here. Uh, definitely a big upgrade. I think it's a 14 ply tire as well, if I recall. Yeah, 14 ply rating tire that's on here as well. So these are uh, just what I need. So when I got that aluminum trailer with the cheap tires on it, I had three blowouts on it in the first six months. It was insane. So I went to my local tire shop here and just had all of them around uh, upgraded with a heavier duty tire along with the spare as well. And the same thing actually happened on my enclosed trailer as well. On the first load that I had with it, I blew a tire on there. And I am not one to overload a trailer. This is just going down the road, hauling well within the design limits for the trailer, blew them out. So I was sick and tired of paying for tires. Went with the upgraded ones. So far, so good on these. Hey, so I got a question for you guys, but what do you guys do to seal or treat your boards? Okay, so I've never actually done that before. I've been considering doing it here, and I have read just everything under the sun about this product working, the same product somebody else says it doesn't work, you know, the Thompson's deck sealer, using old 
um, motor oil or whatever else to go on here. Um, different kinds of sealers, all that kind of stuff. It's just been, it's all over the board. So what are you guys having success with as far as sealing um, your boards here? Are you letting them weather for a little while and then sealing them, power washing? How are you doing it? Um, it just seems advice is all over the board. I'd like to know what you guys had success with and what didn't work for you. And while I'm asking questions, I wanna ask you one more. I keep hearing about airbags, that they're the way to go. Obviously, this is sitting at a very awkward angle here. This handles the load just fine, but I'm still told that airbags really improve the ride of the truck. So what's the positives, what's the negatives? I've heard that there's a lot of trouble with them, but is there a certain type that uh, is pretty much problem free? Can I do this myself? Don't need to have a dealer install it. Any other options out there? So traditionally, I've been a ratchet strap guy. Using straps, um, easier to work with. You know, you can really um, get them into different locations where chains are really just gonna mess up equipment. You know, <laughs> that sounds uh, trivial, but I like my equipment to be clean, new, the pain in good condition, as well as safely securing the piece of equipment that I'm hauling. So along that note, I typically have used a flat hook, J hook like this. You know, like using the stake pockets where you can put it right down in there then bring it up around and have gravity do its thing. However, I posted a video, I don't know, a few months ago about folks uh, just giving me a heck of a hard time about having it exposed on the outside of the rubber rail here. You know, learn something new every day, right? So um, did find that there used to be a law in place that uh, outlawed anything being on, outs on the outside edge of the rubber rail. However, it appears that that was overturned. It's no longer the case. So, you know, it's a great way that I like to tie them down. I don't like to tie them down like this because if something shakes loose, it can just fall right out. But if you wrap it around, well, hey, it's secured in place. So I find myself now transitioning more to the wire hook style, you know, that goes right onto the, the D-ring here. Um, I also added on these additional D-rings just to have that many more tie down points because I carry so many different pieces of equipment, different uh, configurations on here. I wanted to have just a plethora of tie down locations for my equipment. So what this does, it allows me to keep the entire strap all the way inside. Um, I, I still don't feel like this really provides as secure of a um, connection as, you know, wrapping around the, the hook and having gravity do its thing, just keeping it in place. However, it is completely inside the rubber rail. You know, so unfortunately, I didn't really realize this until after the fact, but um, some manufacturers offer an actual welded on rail that can be uh, welded right underneath the frame here. So you can utilize a stake pocket, put your strap down through there and then go underneath here. So you're within the rubber rail the whole time and then latch on and secure with a J hook right underneath the frame of the trailer itself. Hindsight's always 2020, maybe on the next one. Want to take a quick minute and tell you about these stake pocket D rings here. Okay. And so these suckers are actually way heftier, way heavier duty than I thought in pictures. Um, you do not have to get them. I think this is, is this zinc plated? I don't know, I, I forget. But you can also get them just uh, painted regular. You know, I got these because they're supposed to be more corrosion, you know, rust resistant. But um, they're a really snug fit that's in here. You know, if you're looking for additional tie down points on your trailer, I mean, I, in fact, I have to use a hammer to get this uh, right through there. I was, I was concerned about there being a lot, of, a lot of slop, a lot of play that was right up through there. And uh, it turns out that's not the case. Get this right through there, get it in place. And then you can see here, that's really about all the play that there is, just like that. But really good option here to give you another tie down point. If you have stake pockets on your trailer, um, not a lot of D-rings. And you can obviously easily move these around if you have different locations. You don't need to get one for every single stake pocket. Just get it set up for the different equipment that you're hauling at the time. Nice option here to have. Get links for these in the description underneath the video. I've always struggled with, you know, the painted steel versus a galvanized versus an aluminum trailer. Obviously, I want my equipment to look good, and I think most of us do. However, typically, painted steel is the cheapest route you can go, but it's going to end up looking like this very quickly and in fact i'm almost positive if i remember when i bought this two and a half years ago it already kind of looked like this this kind of rusty nasty uh, coloration to it from the very beginning and this is what i found except a lot worse on the other painted trailers that i've had painted steel and so i was really reluctant to go that route again 
with the gooseneck that I purchased last fall. However, the aluminum just is not going to hold up in commercial use. It just was not rigid enough. Uh, galvanized isn't really a popular option in goosenecks. I did appreciate the galvanized. I didn't have any uh, welded or weld issues with the galvanized so much, and obviously it gets a little bit of a discoloration to it, but nothing as nasty and gross as this. So when I had my PJ trailer here custom ordered, you know, I went a little bit of a more expensive route knowing the issues I've had with uh, the rust, the paint failing pretty quickly on these. I actually, I had to pull out my invoice. I printed it out because I, I went through a pretty big expensive upgrade here just to get a primer base on here and then the paint on top of it. Okay, so it was a two part reason there. And the first part is uh, I paid an extra $435.60 to have this sucker primered first before it was painted. I just felt like it was gonna be worth it in the long run. The second part of that is that PJ Trailers only does that at their Texas facility, their, their production facility down there. So it costs an extra four or 500 bucks to also have it shipped up here versus getting it out of maybe a, uh, a Kentucky or Tennessee plant or somewhere else. It was a lot more freight and then it was obviously the cost for the primer as well. Time will tell if that's worth it or not, but so far so good. It has made it through its first winter and it looks pretty good so far. I definitely can't say the same for some other painted steel trailers that I've had. And if you're interested at the end of this video, I'm going to go ahead and put up an actual copy of the invoice with uh, everything that I got on this trailer here so you can see the actual price breakout. I don't sell these trailers, but I'd, I'd like to be able to have you see what it's all about. You can see the cost of the different options on there. I'll try to give you a decent explanation of that. So again, I've had quite a few trailers. You know, I do really like trailers that have sides on them for various reasons when you're maybe moving furniture or, you know, getting a load of mulch, that kind of thing as well. However, it was me doing it uh, from here on out in the future. I would make sure I got a kind of trailer that just had removable sides to it versus uh, fixed sides, you know, with welded uprights and everything else. I'd want everything completely removable around the sides and the back so that I could have an open deck platform if I wanted to and then just have sectional pieces that go down to the stake pockets, for instance, and they can be um, easily removed or put back in if I need to. So for instance, if you bought a car hauler set up, just a flat deck, typically they're gonna come with stake pockets all along the side. It'd be easy enough just to build your own portable, uh, removable sides out of wood and just have those set aside, maybe under a, a tarp or inside your garage or barn to use at your convenience. A tough one for me is really trying to find a reputable trailer manufacturer. And so I've had, you know, SureTrack and um, American Hauler and PJ and uh, just a whole bunch. You know, I'm not, I can't remember what my enclosed one is and I've had so many others. A lot of them I think have been homemade. Well, not a lot, probably three or four. Just all sorts of different trailer manufacturers out there. If you look online, it seems like there's just either you love it or you hate it, you know? And I get a lot of freight haulers in here as well with goosenecks and just about every manufacturer you can think of, you know, Gator Made and Big Tex and the list goes on and on. And it's still a love-hate relationship. I actually have a lot of shipments that kind of either get delayed or canceled and rebooked coming into me because of trailer problems, whether it's brakes, you know, locking up or uh, wiring or whatever else it might be. So I don't know if there's really a, a, a truly superior manufacturer out there or not, but definitely a love-hate relationship with most of these trailer manufacturers. Okay, so I want you to focus kind of on this area right here. Sure, check out everything else if you'd like, but this number right here, the 14,400 pounds, that's what um, can be hauled you know, between the combined weight of the trailer itself and then whatever equipment is being hauled on top of it. You know, you gotta take into consideration things like, um, you know, spare tires, if you have extra storage boxes, you know, anything else that you have on there is gonna affect your ability to um, put equipment on here. You're gonna have to deduct all the trailer weight and the options from the 14,400 pounds and then that's gonna be the load you can actually put on here. So an interesting thing about this number right here is this trailer was originally uh, rated at 15,680 pounds and I actually had it down rated. So the reason I did that is because I'm, I'm hauling this with a couple different trucks, an F-350 and F-250. I wanted to make sure I could stay underneath the 26,000 pound weight limit uh, with either setup that I have going on. And so I didn't even know that this was a legal thing to do, but apparently it is and trailer manufacturers do it all the time. They will downrate them. And so while this trailer technically can haul more weight safely, this is what I am uh, able to haul based on the sticker. There's always the question of what's the right type of trailer to get, you know, an enclosed trailer like this, 
so everything stays nice and clean and dry. A gooseneck, a bumper pull, one of everything. <laughs> Why not if you can? I bought this one um, a couple of years ago. Basically, I needed you know another chunk, another write-off, so I bought this right at the end of the year there. Really have not used it like I thought I was going to. Thought I would use it uh, for more deliveries in the winter time to try to keep tractors clean, that kind of thing. It does have an integrated ramp uh, that, that folds out. It's also six inches taller than standard. That way I could fit larger tractors in there and not be restricted by that overhead height. If I was doing it over again, I probably would not buy this trailer. I really use it maybe two or three times a year, not very often at all. Really just use the open deck trailer over there that suits my needs almost all the time. Even in the winter time, we're typically not doing deliveries on nasty days. And so it's gonna be those nicer, sunnier days that we're out on the road where an open trailer just like that over there is just fine. At this point though, this, this thing is paid off and I just wanna keep it on hand in case I need it. Because you know how it always goes, as soon as you sell a piece of equipment, that's exactly when you find out that you need it. So I'm just gonna hang on to it. You know, so now that I have a gooseneck trailer, I don't know how I could ever really go back to a bumper pull trailer. These pull so much nicer. They feel so much more um, stable going down the road. It's just a night and day difference. You know, they do cost more up front and not every truck, you know, if you have a half ton truck, they're not really set up to haul. But if you have a three quarter or a one ton, boy, I really love the gooseneck setup here. I will say the downside for me is that I do have a camera and looking down into the bed on this truck here. However, when I installed that fuel tank, I can no longer see down to the connection there of the gooseneck going onto the onto the hitch there. So that is a downside for me. Um, so hooking up is perhaps a little bit harder. I have a lot more experience with a bumper pull. That's what I grew up with my whole life. This is being my first gooseneck. I'm still kind of getting the ropes of it. And backing up is still not completely natural to me uh, compared to a, a bumper pull, but I'm sure it'll come with more time. All right guys, so if you're curious to know, I'm gonna go ahead and throw my entire invoice up on the screen and kind of go through it here with you really quick. Uh, you can see total cost delivered with the tax and plate and title, all that, a little bit over 13,000, 13,169.26. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of features on here, the standard features all down below. So some of the options that I added on will override those standard features. And uh, so, you, you know, there won't always be both the standard features and the optional features on there, but added on a lot of options. It is 33 feet long. That's gonna include the five foot dovetail with monster ramps on there. Oh, what else? Upgrades on the tires, the, the load range G tires, 328 bucks. Uh, the, the monster ramps on there were $1,375 upgrade over just the regular flip, you know, the skinny individual flip style. Did not want those. Primer, you can see there, the 435. Um, eight pairs of D-rings, 300, almost 360 bucks. LED reverse lights, $162. Light bar with the four lights on there, 373. I probably wouldn't do that one again. They're not LED lights. Um, I just added them on because I wanted some kind of light, but I would, I would change that if I did it over again. Two extra side marker lights. I will say I had just three of the lights, the front three lights on the far side that don't work. I do have to take those in to get that looked at. Kind of surprised. Nothing else, everything else works just like it should, but those front three lights, um, the, the marker lights are not working. Oh, what else here? Um, under frame spare tire, got that on there, 365 bucks about. Cold weather wiring harness, and that's no upcharge. Uh, plate for a winch, oh yeah, that's right. I did add a plate for a winch on there. It's got the wiring in there, it's ready, so, so that if you add a battery in there, you can hook up some terminals to it, and as long as your um, uh, trailer is connected to the truck, it's gonna get a trickle charge to that battery for a winch. Pretty cool, right there, that was $162. The Bulldog two-speed jacks, 213 bucks there, and then the ramp support arms. The ramp support arms are so that I can take my monster ramps and store them in a vertical position if needed versus having them completely folded flat. And again, if you like trucks, you like trailers, and you like tractors, well, I suggest you hit that subscribe button below. Make sure you read the description as well. A lot of helpful links in there. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.